In this video, we're going to take a look at how to enable Duo Central to make use of single sign-on applications that are protected with Duo. So first, we need to log into the Duo admin panel, as you can see here. And then with single sign-on already configured, we need to click on single sign-on and we need to then select Duo Central. And as you can see, the current status is offline and we can see that we don't have any tiles added as of yet. If we click on the configuration and policy section, we can give Duo Central a name and this will be shown on the browser tab during the authentication. So if we were to change this to Network WizKid Central, we can see I've got my custom URL here our subdomain and we also have the option to specify whether we want to include a link to any useful information where users can get insights into how to navigate duo what duo is etc etc if it is left as blank this won't be shown in duo central so we'll just leave that for the purpose of this demo. But if you do have any useful URLs, it's worth putting, putting them in there. Next is the option for the self-service portal. So we have the ability to allow users to add their own devices or delete their own devices as well. And this is useful if you maybe don't have an help desk team or want to reduce the number of tickets coming through to the help desk. Uh, because of this reason by default you can see it's selected here so we'll just leave this on for now there is also an option to enable enable a standalone url which is going to be used for the self portal instead so you can see if i was if i was to enable this we can see the url here which is just forward slash devices that's what it pretty much adds on we have an option here to allow an in unenrolled users to en enroll their two-factor authentication device into Duo. And this is only going to apply when you have the new user policy set to allow access without 2FA. We're just gonna leave that because that's not the purpose of this video. We've got permitted groups, so we're gonna, if this is selected, gonna only allow access uh, or authentication from specific users in groups. Again, we'll leave that as it is. We have the universal prompt active as well. And then we've got the ability to create new policies as well. By default, we always have the global policy. What we can do is add an application policy and I'll just create a new one. We'll call this Duo Central Policy. And we'll just leave the default settings on here in terms of required enrollment and we're going to enforce mfa if we take a look at authentication methods we've got a number selected here including the rather new verify push and we've got web uh, enabled as well so we'll just go ahead and just create that with what we've got and that's going to now put that policy above the global policy so you can see because we've got the uh, we specified some uh, changes in the Duo Central policy. We can see now these are not applicable underneath. There's a few more settings here around voice greetings. You can add notes and you can also assign administrative units if required. We're not going to focus on them today, so we'll just select save settings. We now have our configuration policy. Uh, configured but the status is still offline because we've not turned it on before we turn that on let's just add a tile and what we can do we've got two options to add an application tile or a bookmark tile if you add an application tile it's going to take you to the applications that are already configured so you can see the number of different applications that are already configured if you prefer you can also add a bookmark tile so this is going to display useful links as tiles and a custom uh, logo that you can add so you can he see here because i've already specified my 
logo in the branding that's going to appear here we can then give that a name a url and then we can make it visible for all all users or only a specific set of users so what we'll do is we'll just stick with this one for now and what we'll give this uh, we'll give this a name of network wizkid server and i've actually got the dual network gateway configured and uh, up and running so this is just going to allow vpnless access to my internal servers and i'm going to be connecting via rdp so i'm just going to specify a url here Once you've done, you can save that. And now you can see as an example here that we've got the, the tile specified here and it's visible for all users. Once you're done with that, you can then go ahead and turn this on. So it goes online and that means the URL now is now active. So in my case, I should be able to navigate to this URL and this is basically my Duo Central portal. So you can see now that I navigate to this URL, I can now put in my email address. And I'll go through my two factor authentication here. And you can see I need to enter my verification code as well. Once I've done that, successfully verified, I can now log in. And now you can see on Duo Central, I've got my username there on the right hand side. I can change from tiles to list if I choose to. You can see that I've got the company logo there on the left hand side. We can search if we've got many different protected applications. And more importantly, we can see the different applications or tiles that we have configured and available here. So if you was to select this one, say for instance, you can see with single sign on, you've already signed into Duo Central. So it's not going to ask me again for my username and password. It's just now asking me to complete two factor authentication. Now, if I click yes on that, logging you in, let's hit update later on this but I can't connect to the application because I have not configured it on the other side fully. But nevertheless, we can see there that we successfully authenticated and you will be redirected to your application that's protected. And we never needed to enter another username and password, as I said. So again, as an example, if I go back now and I, let's say, add another tile and I'm just going to add Another one that I have configured. If I say put in the URL here. And then we save that. Now if I was to refresh my Duo Central, you can see now I've got Network WizKid FMC. So if I click on that. Again, I don't need to enter my username and password again as primary credentials. I'm just taken through to my two-factor authentication. Once we've authenticated, you can see now that I can now access an internal web-based application and I didn't have to enter my username and password again. Now we added in our Duo Central, we added a bookmark tile for this. You can also do the same thing. So if we just remove that one there, we can also do the same thing for the application. So because we've already got the application configured as part of the Duo Network Gateway, what we can do here is we can add the 
application and then we can specify the URL. And if you're not familiar with the Duo Network Gateway and want to understand how this works a little bit more, you can also check out my other videos. I have a full Duo Network Gateway video series on my YouTube channel. So once that's done, if we just go back now and we refresh, we can see that we've got the web application and you can change that name to something more suitable for end users. And then we click on there and there you go. You can see I'm taken straight through this time. And that's because I already went through the two-factor authentication a moment ago as well. So two ways to add it. So very straightforward to configure the Duo Central and get set up, up and running and use it for single sign-on based applications.